It is that time of year again where we start to transform our apartments for the holidays and that can put a hole in our pockets and also take up a lot of space. So in this video, I wanted to share with you different budget-friendly DIYs that take up little to no space at all that anyone can achieve with things you already own or by buying a couple more items to display things you already own in a different innovative way. Every single year I try to do this. I try to take things I already have currently and make new holiday decor from those items. Last year I did a book Christmas tree using books I already owned. The year before I did a dark academia Christmas tree. And this year I decided to do something even more different from all of those and it's going to be extremely challenging. I know that, but I think in the end it will be worth it. So before we start with the video, let's talk about all the different DIYs that I will be covering in this video. Because my space is small and I don't have a lot of storage, I want to make sure I keep as much floor space as possible. I do not plan to put up a Christmas tree this year, therefore I have opted to do a floating Christmas tree. After the floating Christmas tree, I'm going to be showing you a super easy way to give your pillows a festive makeover using items you probably already own. Next, I'm going to be doing a winter themed accent wall. And when I say winter themed accent wall, I want you to imagine this as a prom backdrop that you would take photos in front of because that's what I envisioned in my head when I came up with this idea. And then next I will be doing an accent wall in my living room. This is really a free-for-all zone where you can do whatever you want. And lastly, I'm going to be decorating the only storage I have in my apartment, which is my bookshelf. I'm going to be decorating it using items that I DIY'd and again, using things I already own. All of these DIYs will be budget friendly. They are going to be space savers. They'll be perfect for small apartments or for anyone that is just interested in revamping their decorations in a new way. And it will also be DIYs that are really fun for you to just do. I will also link all the materials below that you will need for these projects, just in case you don't have them. For the floating Christmas tree, I decided to put it in my living room because this is the first room you walk into when you enter my apartment. For this project, you will need plastic ornaments, some fishing wire, packaging tape, scissors, one very heavy book or multiple books, crazy tacks or thumbtacks. Kind of hard to show you what I'm doing just because it's clear and when I'm trying to film it wrapping around the book, you can't see it. So I'm just going to try to explain as best as I can. I'm making all of the pieces the exact same length, pulling out the string like this, and then I'm wrapping this part around the book, and then I'm pulling out this side to match the length on the other side. And then I cut it, and that way I have two sides I can start putting ornaments on instead of just working on one string at a time, I can do two at a time, which is making it go a lot faster. I've already done three and it's been about 15 minutes. It looks cool even like this. I just like the fact that it's so clean. Because a Christmas tree is symmetrical, we're going to be making about 10 pieces of fishing line with ornaments. I started by measuring out where I wanted the top of the tree to hang and began building the rest of the tree on the ground in the shape of a triangle. I created five pairs of hanging ornaments, making each individual pair identical to mirror each other on both sides of the tree. For example, the first pair created to hang as the second row at the top of the tree consisted of seven ornaments. The third row consisted of six ornaments, the fourth row consisted of five, the fifth row consisted of four, and so on. I hope this is making sense. I hope it makes more sense once you see me put it up. That definitely took some time, it took about an hour. I'm going to just start putting them up. This is gonna be hard. So when it comes to hanging the Christmas tree, I highly recommend taping them up first so you get a sense of the placement before you go and put all of those tacks into the ceiling because you don't wanna create a bunch of unnecessary holes if you don't have to. You can use thumbtacks for this project. You will have to tediously tie a tiny knot around the thumbtack, which might be quite difficult. So what I would recommend using is a thing called crazy tacks. And these are thumbtacks that have these hooks. They hold up to two pounds and it would just be perfect for a project like this. You can get a pack of crazy tacks that are $10 and you can get thumbtacks for around $1.50. And thumbtacks do hold up to a pound. So if you have those already, I recommend just trying to use what you already have. But I will say crazy tacks are going to be easier to use in the end. And technically speaking, you don't even need to use thumbtacks because the tape is strong enough. 
I'm gonna be honest, this isn't looking like a Christmas tree right now. So we might uh, change up what we're doing here. This is my worst nightmare right here. Do you see this knot I have to deal with? The downside to using this is uh, the knots. And I swear I was very careful. Once I had all the pieces up, it finally started to come together, but I did step back and fill in all those extra gaps using some ribbon, tying some bows, and adding some extra ornaments using my fishing wire. Then I cut off any excess fishing wire that was sticking out and added my actual tree skirt underneath on my coffee table to kind of give the illusion of a tree. Now before I show you how this turned out, I'm going to show you how to give your pillows a festive makeover just using ribbon and the pillow you already own. I got this ribbon from Gifts last year and I kept it and all I'm going to be doing is just tying it around my pillow as if it's a gift. Now if your ribbon isn't long enough like mine, all you have to do is just to do exactly what I'm doing in this video, but just do it twice, which I will show you how to do in just a second. I think this is such a cute way to make your pillows look like a present on your sofa and not actually go out and buy a new pillowcase and then store it away for the rest of the year. I just wanted to show you a good example of using things that you may already have in your home and not letting those things go to waste. And now for the final reveal. Before we move on into transforming my apartment, I wanted to take a second to introduce today's sponsor of the video, Hernest. Hernest is an amazing furniture company that was founded by a group of talented designers who were obsessed with contemporary minimalism while exploring the fields of furniture design. They believe that beneath a simple exterior, furniture can convey a unique sense of beauty and functionality through exquisite craftsmanship and high quality materials. Their designers extensively research modern lifestyles and home needs, combining minimalist aesthetics with practicality to create a unique and refined furniture design. Designs. What I love about their items is they are incredibly unique and when you take a look at their pieces you will see that a lot of their pieces are surrounding functionality. There's a lot of two-in-one multi-purpose items that can go into a home that do so many different things without taking up a lot of space. Like this amazing coffee table for instance that holds not only all four chairs, but a full dining room table as well. So I have the Cheska chair from them, and it's this iconic chair from the 20s that I've always wanted. It's said to be one of the most popular chairs of that decade. I feel like recently I've been seeing them everywhere, but I have always wanted a chair like this in my home, and I think it's so cool to have a chair that's decade accurate, but it also looks a bit modern. I also have this side table that has a marble top with gold accent leaf detailing on the side and it's just the perfect place to display my items in a pretty way and also contains a little bit of storage. If you're interested in checking out the items I just mentioned along with their other furniture I will link everything below for you along with a discount code just 15 for 15% off site-wide. And thank you so much again to Hernest for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to the makeovers. Now for my winter accent wall, I decided to make over a wall in my kitchen. For me, the smaller the space, the better because that means I don't have to make as many snowflakes. It feels more immersive when I add the snowflakes I do create and I wanted that overall feeling of winter as soon as you walk in the room. And if I'm doing a space that's too large, I'm probably not 
not going to get that feeling. You can also choose to do an accent wall somewhere else in your place, maybe over your console table, even behind your bed frame. That would be a really good spot too. So there are many different places that you can choose to put an accent wall, but because I have such a small kitchen, I just felt it was the perfect opportunity to create that winter ambiance there. To make the snowflakes, all you will need is printing paper and some scissors. Now to make the snowflakes, you're going to need to follow this step by step. I'm not going to explain it because explaining it sounds so confusing. So if you just watch how I am doing this, you will easily be able to make snowflakes on your own. Now for the most important part is cutting out your design. You'll just need to make sure here that you do not cut out one edge entirely. You need to leave some space in between your designs and you don't want to cut all the way to the top with your design because it will just cut the piece in half. You will learn on your own if you end up doing this mistake, but it's very easy to fix and you'll be sure to not do it the next time if that ends up happening. For the next part of this project, you will just need your fishing wire, scissors, and scotch tape. All I'm doing is laying out the fishing wire at my desired length, putting the snowflake underneath the fishing wire and laying that wire right on top and taping the wire down on both sides of the snowflake. Once I did this, it actually made the snowflake stay in its desired shape. It did not bend. Then I repeated this process, making some of the fishing line longer and some shorter, just to give the snowflakes different lengths when they are up on my wall. For the next part of this project, you will need that packaging tape, some scissors, some normal Christmas lights, any type of curtain. I'm using white sheer curtains, but if you have color, that's okay too. Some weather strip nails, a tape measure, and a hammer. All I'm doing is hammering the first nail and attaching the curtains to that nail. And then I'm going to use my tape measure to measure the entire wall divided by three to get the correct placement for each panel. I decided to let my curtains drape because I just liked that effect. I thought it looked very whimsical. And now I'm adding in my Christmas lights underneath those curtains. And I wanna give that nice glowing effect. And I know my curtains are sheer and my Christmas lights are green, but you couldn't really tell and I wasn't gonna go buy anything new for this project. To attach my lights to the nail, I just spread open the wire and I put the light through it and I just did this underneath the curtain so it was hidden and I created this loop like this. It's perfect. It cost me, you know, nothing to do this because it was paper I already had and I've had the pack for legit five years. I'm not, I'm not kidding. You can like buy stuff like this, but you can also just make it and it's way easier. So all I'm using to put this up is I'm just using packaging tape and I'm just gonna put it to the ceiling, it's clear. I'm just gonna hang it in front and my idea is to kind of make it look like a winter wonderland prom backdrop that you would take photos in front of. Okay, I'll say, it's looking pretty cool. Now I'm adding some fishing wire to some snowflakes I already owned, and I'm going to hang those up too. I'm just adding those remaining snowflakes to the rest of my kitchen, and here is the final result.
next accent wall I wanted to create in my living room was just a free-for-all accent wall. I'm using tinsel for this accent wall along with two stockings and I'm just going to display it in a way I feel that's creative surrounding what's already currently on my wall. So if you have a space like that, then this would be a good place to start and adding those decorations. I'm using my tinsel, some LED lights that have multiple colors, and packaging tape along with my stockings, which I already mentioned. So there's not a lot going into this. I'm using the remainder of my decorations that I have left and just putting them all here. I figured this was the perfect wall that I can decorate. I look at this mirror before I leave the house and it's a wall that you see right when you walk in my home. So I think it would be really cute with the stockings right here and just have this focal point be the mirror. And obviously it's, it's gonna be simple, but it'll be cute. Lastly, I am making over my bookshelf. We are going to be making some snow covered pine cones to add as decorations. But other than that, it's really just using your creativity and making it look festive. Because this is my only furniture in my living room where I have the option to display things on a shelf, I wanted to take advantage of that if I could. For this, I'm using tinsel, Christmas lights, some other miscellaneous items, and these snow covered pine cones. To make my pine cones, all I used was white acrylic paint, glitter, and pine cones I collected from outside along with a paintbrush to apply the paint. I quite literally just put the paint on the paintbrush, not even using a palette because you don't really need that, and I dabbed the paint on the edges of the pine cone. Before the paint dries, you'll want to add the glitter on top so that way it sticks to the pine cone and let it dry before using it as decor. Also, please ignore my chipped nails. They look disgusting. <laughs> I still need the bookshelf to hold the majority of my books, so I just cleared out two spots from my shelf in order to display my pine cones and a few other things. to bring in a little more festivity, I added my Christmas lights around the outside of my bookshelf, just hanging off on the sides. I got this Christmas tree from Hobby Lobby for $10, not including the ornament set, but yeah, it's a cute little addition to my shelf. And then I added this red bow that I got from the 99 cent store years back. And if you're looking for affordable holiday decor, they always have really good stuff that you will normally see at other major stores, but for half the price. And then I added another Christmas tree that I also got from Hobby Lobby. I think this one was 15 and the lights I added on my own.
that is it for all of my budget-friendly Christmas DIYs. I hope you enjoyed watching me make over all of these individual spaces in my home and I gave you some ideas when it comes to doing new and creative decorations in your own. That being said, if you do end up doing any of these DIYs, please share them with me on Instagram because I would love to see how you guys create them using your own unique sense of style. And if you have any questions in regards to the DIYs I did in today's video, please leave me a comment below and goodbye. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.